Today we're going to take a quick look at a new feature of Logi Info that makes deploying your Logi applications even to multiple servers as simple as one click. So from Logi Studio, we're going to use the Tools menu to launch our new application deployment wizard. Since this is the first time we're running our deployment wizard, we're not going to see any deployment targets listed, so let's go ahead and create a new one. Now a deployment target is a location where we wish to publish our Logi application. So let's fill in some details. The first target I'm going to create is for my test server. So I'm going to call it test Logi. Now with any target we can also specify the location or how we move those files, whether it's a local network path, FTP, FTP over SSL, or even SSH. We can select the transfer method and then fill in the path option. Since my test server happens to be a local network, I'm going to choose that option and then I can either type in the path or I can browse for that folder location. Since I already know my location, I'm just going to go ahead and type it in. And then I can use the test button to make sure that the connection works. Now at the bottom here, we can also specify which files to deploy, which helps us manage our deployment. As you can see, we have options for definition and support files, settings, and even server engine. By default, all of our options are going to be checked, which is very useful for first-time deployments, where we simply need to copy everything up to a specific targeted server. But for custom deployments, we can start unchecking some of these options. For example, the settings file. We might already have a settings file on our test server that has specific content for that deployment, so we don't want to overwrite that with our development settings. The server engine option is also useful for things like upgrades as well as when our deployment environments might be different from our development environments. For example, my development system might be a 32-bit, but I need to deploy to a 64-bit so I can specify the server type with my server engine. The available versions allow me to manage my versions that are deployed, so once again, that's great for my upgrades. And when we click OK, we can save our deployment target. Now you can create any number of deployment targets and I'm going to add one more here to my test and this is going to be my QA server. So I'm going to call it QA server and my QA server happens to be access accessible through FTP so we'll use an FTP path to connect to that particular system. And when we click test if authentication is needed, we can also fill in username and password content. Choose the save password to remember those credentials so you don't have to type it in the next time. And once again, we can manage our deployment by using the options below, unchecking or checking the boxes that are required. So now that we have two deployment targets created, we can manage either editing those deployments or actually deploying our applications. But before we do that, one last thing we're going to do is manage the files themselves. So we might have some files that we don't wish to deploy to our deployment targets. For example, in my project here, I have this folder that I've called working, which happens to include some test reports and demo reports that I don't want to publish to my test or my QA server. So what I can do is I can select that whole folder by right clicking and I can choose the menu options that says include in deployments and when I uncheck that it's going to exclude those files from my deployment target and we can do that on any folder or any specific file within our project so I might have support files or other definitions that I don't want to include maybe some CSS files or other other documents that I don't need to publish to those targets I can uncheck those very easily um, from the deployment and when I rerun that deployment wizard, if I go in and edit any of my deployment targets, we're going to see now a link to view any files that are being excluded. And when we click on that link, we'll see that working folder that I excluded as well as that CSS file, both of which were excluded from my deployment. So now that I'm ready to deploy, we can select one or multiple deployment targets to deploy to, and with that single click, we can deploy our files. So let's go ahead and run the deployment. We're going to test our connections. Once again, if credentials are required, because I saved it, I don't have to fill it in again. 
and now it's going to start the process of deploying my content and we can follow the deployment and see those files being published to the appropriate servers including which files are being excluded from the deployment process everything is being logged so if we want to view the logs we can also click to launch into the logs with all of the detailed information from that particular deployment if you'd like to learn more about this new deployment feature make sure to visit the article on DevNet by clicking on the link within the blog post. And once again, thanks for watching.